Hi everybody! Today I'm going to walk you through how to respond to an AP language rhetorical analysis essay. College Board recently changed their scoring rubric from a 9-point scale to a 6-point scale. They also changed the criteria on how they plan to award points. I'll link to the rubric below, but if you read through it, you might find that a lot of the verbiage they use is kind of confusing. So I thought I'd walk you through a sample essay that I wrote. So here's the prompt. It's pretty standard language, but I included it because I want to make sure you're familiar with the instructions. I'm not going to read through it, so if you need some time to read, pause the video here. There isn't space in the video to include the email that I wrote my essay in response to, so I'll include a link in the description below. I strongly encourage you to read through it so you have a better understanding of what my essay is about. It's pretty short anyways. As I go through my essay, I'll make sure to point out specific places that I think are important to note. Places I think will convince an AP grader to award me points for my essay according to the newly revised rubric. So if you're ready, let's get started. On Sunday, May 17th, 2020, an email appeared that caught its recipients by surprise. Whereas most emails received on a weekend often remain unaddressed, this one letter caused a commotion. College Board, CB, had announced some changes to exam administration that would take place exactly halfway through its worldwide AP administration. For weeks prior, CB, Trevor Packer, and Dinosauce 313 had been on the blunt end of criticism for their hastily redesigned AP exam policies. AP 2020 seemed to be destined for infamy. As such, CB needed to spring into action. Through a combination of lawyerly crafted rhetoric techniques, such as extremely specific word choice and selective use of data, CB attempts to assuage its readers by addressing their concerns while simultaneously deflecting any possibility of blame. The email itself starts with a bit of fanfare. Today we reach the midway point of the two-week primary administration. Such deliberate word choice harkens back to the beginning of many presidential addresses or breaking news reports. But alas, this is not a serious situation. It is a happy one. CB is proud of its myriad participants in this program. They utilize optimistic diction like showed up and claim the college credit to paint an image of bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, eager young academics who are destined for bigger and greater things. Truly, this word choice is inspired because saying that these students rolled out of bed to take a stressful, unfamiliar exam they aren't even sure they can submit, let alone pass, just doesn't have the same ring to it. CB knows their audience. They specifically strike a tone of intentional positivity that clearly attempts to instill a feeling of warm fuzzies into their potentially stressed out reader. In the next paragraph, CB gets straight to business by dropping a huge number, 2.2 million. This staggering number of exams taken is enough to make its readers' head spin as it contains far more zeros than their annual salary. CB, who clearly has the resources to count millions of exams, conveniently goes on to state that a vast majority of students successfully completed their exams. Notice the sudden shift of their data providing ability. Instead of an exact data point, CB leaves the reader with the vagueness of vast majority. Is this a possible attempt to veil a number that they do not want their reader privy to? I mean, vast sounds so large and big and vast. But in reality, vast majority could vary from 60 to 99% depending on whom you ask. The fact that they followed a definitive number with such an ambiguously positive platitude shows that CB clearly does not want to distract from the celebratory tone established in the first two lines. Rather than engage in any sort of negative, possibly incriminating word selection, CB continues to ease the mounting frustration of their reader with aggressively positive, albeit unclear, statements. But then of course, CB finally starts to delve into the real issue. However, some students have encountered challenges. Notice the use of the ambiguous SOME as if to somehow deflect the attention from the potential hundreds or hundreds of thousands of students that they could be referencing. 
No, the emphasis should be placed on the fact that they are listening closely. On the surface, one can almost smell the empathy and compassion. However, upon deeper inspection, one cannot ignore the blatant omission of listening's counterpart responding. Indeed, a hasty reader may miss the unstated message. In this ideal scenario, CB may successfully achieve its dual purpose of alleviation and deflection. CB also reminds us of whom they are listening to with the use of series. They've listened to each student, parent, or educator who reports a problem. This use of series clearly emphasizes that they have left no stone unturned in their listening endeavors. Indeed, this simple list seems to reiterate compassion and inclusion, but it also belies a darker underbelly. CB can attest to listening because their understaffed call centers have resulted in many callers giving up before they can speak to a live representative. CB can attest to listening because other words like addressing, discussing, and coordinating would imply too much action. CB can attest to listening because their business hours occur when many frazzled European, Asian, and African students are asleep and unable to call to report anything. Granted, CB administrators have been quite busy the past two months attempting to pull off the Herculean task of administering 2.2 million AP exams, so one can forgive their interesting verb choice. Maybe listening was all they could do. Shortly after, CB lays out the important news, all the while continuing to carefully cherry-pick words. Of course, they must preface the list first. We share the deep disappointment of students who are unable to submit responses. Compare this with a phrase like, We share students' disappointment in our messed up submission process. This slight shift in language and the omission of a possessive pronoun like our is all it takes to avoid even the slightest hint of culpability. Somehow it also makes CB all the more heroic, as if this disappointment somehow spurred them to take action that they were never required to take in the first place. Then, to end the list, CB reiterates that they are unable to prevent every possible local error from occurring during the exam. This choice of absolute language both makes clear that there is no responsibility on CB's part, but also shifts the onus onto the reader. The tone suddenly becomes more urgent. The firm wording directs the reader to pay more attention to this important content. Indeed, CB does understand their secondary audience, high school students. As CB emphasizes this list, the overstressed high school counselor reading this email is reminded that it is their job, not CB's, to nag their lovingly forgetful students, who will still email and text them five minutes before the exam with profound confusion anyways. And of course, CB cannot end an empathetic email without a kind send-off to remind the reader that they care. With gratitude, Advanced Placement Program. The lack of inclusion of name makes stunningly clear to the dear colleague addressee of this letter that there is no recourse or opportunity to respond. While the words give off the impression of kindness, they also make clear that if there are any issues, then the reader can kindly yell profanities into their pillow instead of responding to a real live person. The conclusion of this email provides a gentle reminder that while CB is a non-profit organization, they are, at the end of the day, still a billion-dollar educational monopoly. So just for clarity, how will points be awarded? You can earn one point for a strong defensible thesis. Remember that your thesis shouldn't just describe the prompt. You should present a strong claim or opinion that can be supported by the text. You can earn up to four points for your evidence and commentary. To earn full credit, you need to provide specific evidence that helps support your claim. You can't just cite the text. You need to make sure that you explain how this evidence backs up your argument. And every time you write a paragraph, remember to reinforce your thesis at the end. Finally, the sophistication point, the hardest point to earn. You can earn this point by indicating the complexities of the argument. 
Remember that every argument has multiple points of view. You can also place the writer's argument into a broader context. Look up the acronym Space Cat if you need ideas on how to do so. And of course, like every good English student, you should be using your own rhetorical devices and fancy style to contribute to the sophistication of your essay. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. It was just an idea I came up with suddenly in the middle of all the drama of APCs in 2020. Please don't take the satire too seriously. It was just something fun that I thought would be educational but also make you smile. If it did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions on what kind of videos you want me to make next, leave a comment below. And don't forget to click the subscribe button.